Good morning. Good morning. I'm your celebrant this morning. I'm Father Mike Goldberg, uh, recently retired from uh, St. Augustine Parish in Navarro Beach, and I'll be the pinch hitter for the next four weeks. I know you're all excited about that, but I'm here and I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here with you and uh, to share the altar that Father Smith last week and, uh, of course, uh, Father Goodrich, who's on vacation. Uh, our friendships go back a long, long time. Our service begins on page 355 in the prayer book, or you can follow it, of course, on the screen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson is from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have pro prophesied and bring back to his place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people, the, pe the prophets who preceded you 
and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle, sorry. The Psalm. We will read a portion of Psalm 89 responsively by verse. Your, lo your love, O God, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sown an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength and by your favor your might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler, the Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> The epistle is a reading from Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you get then? Did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Please be seated. <clears throat> In our gospel, we have Matthew's missionary discourse coming to an end, finally, on a more optimistic note than what we had heard and seen in last week. As Jesus reminds us of who we are and what we are, and how we are supposed to be and doing as a family in God. As he speaks about the rewards for obedience in carrying out the mission of the kingdom of God. It's very important for Matthew to stress that kingdom of God. The model of Middle Eastern hospitality is something spelled out for us. As Jesus reminds us of that, giving even a cup of cold water to these little ones, you are revealed the kingdom of God. I have experienced this type of hospitality in my own life, once in the United States, another time in Bethlehem, as a gift of some Arab Christians. My closest friend in seminary was a man named Amin Michael Horniak. Amin came from McKeesport, Pennsylvania, at one time a bustling mill town with about as many ethnic groups within the city limits as you could shake a stick at. I've never seen a town like that, a small town that had four different types of Catholic church. You had the Irish Catholic church, you had the Italian Catholic church, you had the Polish Catholic church, you had the Catholic Catholic church, you had the Methodists, you had the Presbyterians, you had Syrian Orthodox, you had Greek Orthodox, you had Russian Orthodox, you had the Methodist Church. Last of all, there was an Episcopal Church there too as well. It was amazing how they all seemed to get along. My friend Mike, his, da his dad was uh, born of Hungarian ancestry. His mother, mom, his mother was a second generation Syrian who if she could have given the reins of power of the world would have solved all the world's problems by inviting them to dinner at her house. Come, I will cook for you. And she would say that, and if you left the table without having seconds, she'd be visibly hurt. <clears throat> I drove out for a visit in between our, our, our first and second years at seminary in the summer from New Jersey to McKeesport, Pennsylvania, in my 1968 Le Mans with no air conditioning, in the middle of July, and it gets hot. Those of you who remember up north, it gets hot and hot. And the Pennsylvania Turnpike was even hotter that day. 
I started in the morning, and by the time I got there, it was about 4.30 in the afternoon. When I got to the house, I walked into the house, and I was welcomed, of course, by Michael and his mother, who gave me big hugs as if it was a long-lost friend, a long-lost family member, actually. And then I, I could smell, you could smell the fried chicken. You could smell the vermicelli. Platters, literally, two platters, fried chicken, vermicelli and rice. And she said, sit down, I make it for you. So I sat down. Mrs. Horniak stood. My buddy Michael was standing. They brought in family members to come in and all watch. Michael's friend from seminary has come. Come, watch him eat. Mike was an only child, but his extended family was unbelievable. When they celebrated, they knew how to celebrate. They would take over the, the, uh, the Orthodox Hall at the, one of the Eastern churches, and they would celebrate like only can be. I learned how to do the dupki, which is the national dance of the Syrians, apparently. I learned how to, rather than do the rock and roll dancing, we danced the dupki in, on Michael's ordination day. We finished, actually I finished dinner. I could barely get it all down. I didn't really. I did my best, but I couldn't finish. Mike's mother forgave me because of the long trip. I'll feed you more tomorrow. That was Monday afternoon. By Wednesday evening, I couldn't eat another bite. Finally, Mike, who's an only child and a little spoiled at times, even as an adult, stepped in and yelled at his mother. Mom, for God's sake, you're killing him. She didn't miss a beat. She simply said, I thought he was hungry. I hadn't learned the phrase yet that my house is your house. When my parents came out to McKeesport for Mike's ordination two years later, Mike's mom and dad gave up their room for my folks while they took the couch and recliner in their living room. Some would say that's a bit extreme, but for Mrs. Horniak, that's what family does. You're not a guest, you're family. Jesus reminds us that today. To welcome a prophet is to receive a prophet's reward. Righteous people who are mature in their faith, living in obedience to God, are to be received with grace. Because in the eyes of the faithful, to receive a prophet and to hear his or her words is to receive God himself. Thus the little ones who have received even a cup of cold water, these are new disciples, not just little children, but new disciples who are welcomed into the fellowship of Christ's church. Those sent out by God will be cared for by others, and they must learn, <clears throat> they must learn to receive graciously as well as to give. We must also allow others to use their gifts with the knowledge that all the gifts that come, come from God. I noticed that as I walked into the church this morning. You, you did well on your painting job. The smell of new paint is practically out the door by now. It looks wonderful. You did a great job. People coming together. That's what disciples do. <clears throat> Though the mission of the disciples as described by Jesus, it would sometimes entail danger, as we heard last week. Uncertainty, even dissension among the ranks. There's also the promise of God's continual presence who will sustain us and nurture us, even in the most difficult of times. As representatives of Christ today, we bring Christ to the world, reflecting all that he means to us. As the revelation of the Father, we celebrate his life as only what you can do as Christians. As my old boss used to say, when people gaze upon the face of Jesus, they saw the human face of God. I like that image. I like to feel that, that when I gaze upon Christians as we gather together, I'm seeing the face of God in each and every one of you. And hopefully you might see that in me as well. But we need to do something with that. You may be wondering what this sense of hospitality and holy faith is all about. <clears throat> some of you I remember from years ago. Some of you I'm obviously a stranger. But I have personally experienced your sense of hospitality and outreach here over the years at various touchstones in your history here at the parish. I remember Dan Moore's ordination and his installation and confirmation with Bishop Hugo some 20 years ago. Some of you remember that. Remember that? Bishop Hugo stood there and he said, we're going to do a confirmation. We're going to do an ordination. We're going to install your new rector. Sit back. Enjoy yourself. We're going to be here for a while. You remember that? He was that blunt. He welcomed us into that ordination. He welcomed us into the mystery of what the ordination had, the mystery of the confirmation, the mystery of the installation welcoming the new rector and of course the Eucharist itself is celebrated. I was here for an Ascension Eve service we did about 10 years ago. We used to have the ecumenical clergies and, and the, the clergy from Southeast Deanery. Again, some of you remember that. 
where we all got together and we celebrated the Ascension Day Eucharist. I was privileged to preach that evening. And afterwards, we had a reception in the parish hall. And again, not just some dried up cookies and something. We had food. We sat down. We talked. They wanted to know what was going on. This is what we did. This is what we do here. And even last Sunday, as I sat in the back of the church and Father Smith was kind enough to point me out to y'all. Of course, the red shirt probably was a dead giveaway. But then to be invited back to the parish hall and again, thinking something, a, a quick little bit of coffee and a move out. You had what most people would call lunch. And nobody was running out the door. They were coming in and enjoying the fellowship, enjoying the food and talking about what it is to be at Holy Faith Parish. <clears throat> the point here is that the gospel was being celebrated. As you communicated the good news in worship and then the offering of the delicious meal in the parish hall for those who wish to stay. The missionary response that was made was one of reaching out to people one-on-one -on -one and making folks feel welcome, as you have done here many, many times over the years. It was the gospel being lived out. That was being preached and celebrated in the broken bread and offered cup. It was fulfilled when you came to the parish hall. But that's only the beginning. Because we were also told to go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Remember, you hear that at the end of the Eucharist? The deacon or the celebrant says something words similar to that, saying when the service is over, go out into the world. Tell the people what's going on here. It is the power of living into our baptism that compels us to do something, what we've learned and prayed about in this very service. But let's face it, words come very easily, don't they? People can say anything they want. <clears throat> Following through has always been the problem. How many times have you heard over the years, well, you know, I'm a Christian. Good. Good for you. Or, I'm born again. Fine. What have you done with it? Go around making slogans and proclaiming to people and then walking away does nothing. All it does is realize what a travesty our Christian faith turns into. It becomes a slogan, something you can snap onto your shirt, slip on your car, and walk away. And we all know people like that, don't we? Who profess and call themselves Christians, as the old prayer book used to say, and yet don't do anything with it. I would bet that most of you when, you, when you didn't get out of bed this morning, were thinking of getting out of bed this morning, I bet you were thinking about church, and you were thinking, i got to get to church because I remember, I remember being taught about the first ecumenical council of the Church of Nicaea in 325 AD when we, church was made legit by Emperor of Constantine. Getting excited over that, did you? <laughs> I have to get to church to fulfill the acceptance of Christ because the mystery of the virgin birth is something that I want to hold on to. That's probably not something that got you out of bed early this morning either. What prompted you to get out of bed was probably somebody who brought you to church. Might have been your grandparents. Might have been your parents. Might have been the simple fact that the church means something to you that you need to be here, that you want to be here, that Christ has called you to be here. And the teachings of our faith, the Council of Nicaea, the virgin birth, the Trinity itself, all are indeed things that line up. But first, we've been called, we've been brought. Someone has said, not only I'm a Christian, but I'd like you to be with me. What does Jesus say when the first disciples are brought to him? He says very simply, he says, come, come, follow. Come, I will see. <clears throat> Maybe it was a dinner. A Christian man or a woman invited you to dinner one night. And they sat down, not heavy handed, but they sat there and said, do you go to church? You don't. Let me tell you about my parish. This is what we do at Holy Faith and started to talk. This is what I talk about my faith. This is where God means to me and says something to me. They offered hospitality and recognized that hospitality is what Christ does when he offers the Eucharist to us every Sunday and offers his life to us that we offer our lives to others. That's the sense of the Christian message. That's what being a Christian is about. That's what being born again is about. If you don't do anything with it, they're just words. The personal purpose of every Christian is to express Christ. The secret of life, in whatever ways it happens to be offered, according to our own gifts that we can offer, is first to lay claim to the sacred responsibility. We express Jesus Christ. We see the human face of God, and we proclaim that to others around us. When we do this in Christ's name, then everything we do takes on a devotion and a dynamic new way of living. 
moves us merely from being successful, whatever the world means by that, but rather into being in an active connection that brings one to Christ. That's what Jesus is saying in that short, that short section of the gospel. How many times have we gone to church and hear the whole big, long pericope of the gospel being read? This Sunday you've got seven lines, eight lines tops. But in those eight lines, we are reminded you have a prophecy reward. If you offer a cup of cold water, even to these little ones, you have done what the Christian community is about. You've expressed the message of Jesus Christ. You've offered something of yourself to someone else. You have trouble thinking about this concept? Thinking about this lovely Christian woman so many years ago, standing in her kitchen, offering the very best that God gave her, her very self. And you too can be transformed yourself in Christ's name. You had to meet Mama Horniak. She was the best. And she would sit there, and or actually she wouldn't just sit very much at all. She stood. She had more energy than 10, ten women I ever knew. And she would look at and say very simply, you come to my house, I will feed you. Amen. Please stand. Let us say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Prayers of the people are guided by Form 1. With, our, with all our heart <coughs> excuse me, and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Justin, our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a seasonable, for a seasonable weather, and for an abundance of fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially Althea, Beverly, 
Blake, Blossom, Bonnie, Caitlin, Calliope, Carol, Caroline, Cleon, Curtis, Debbie, Dido, Dwayne, Dennis, Donald, Desreen, Desmond, Earl, Idris, Erica, Estelle, Fiona, Francia, Jeanette, Gloria, Gus, Handel, Hazel, Herman, Howard, Iona, Jamie, Jason, Jean, Jennifer, Jessica, Jim, Joey, John, Kate, Kalil, Kyle, Leandus, Lisa, Lena, Leroy, Lloyd, Lorraine, Madison, Martha, Marlene, Megan, Melrose, Michael, Moriah, Patricia, Pauline, Priscilla, Randolph, Rick, Ronald, Rose, Roy, Ruby, Ruth, Sean, Sean, Shirley, Stafford, Stephanie, Suzanne, Terry, Teresa, Terry, Trevor, Toppin Family, Tyler, Verona, Vivia, Wayne Jr., William, Zelma. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by the grace. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God, to thee, Lord our to God. Thee, o Lord, our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Using the form on page 360 or on our screens, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you.
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto the Lord. things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. 
This Holy Eucharist offered to the glory of Almighty God and grateful thanksgiving for the God's hospitality and our own as we celebrate him in our midst. Also, we pray for our nation as we begin this week. Our Independence Day is on Tuesday as our celebration 247 years of our freedom. May God continue to bless America and bless us that we indeed work out the American experiment. Our service continues on page 361 with Eucharistic Prayer A, found in the bulletins and also on, your, on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now sing.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, taken in remembrance that Christ died for you, feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Test out the body of Christ, the third of heaven. Of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Come. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The body of Christ, the heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of 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 heaven. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and may with you this day and always. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 
body of Christ in the bread of heaven. Amen. Should we pull people up? Will you show me how to get there? Yes. Okay. Thank you. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Some announcements? Say the prayer for post communion? Okay. You said after communion. I thought this is it. Sorry. Let us say together the post communion prayer. I'll learn it yet. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace be brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working you that which is well-pleasing in his sight and the blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any visitors? Yes. Do you mind? Okay. And your name? Lisa. So glad to have you. And um Birthdays, May. anniversaries? I'll tell you what, we'll do the birthday blessing here, and at the end of the Mass, I'll come back and bless you personally. How's that? <laughs> Otherwise, you can run up and down the aisle, and I won't be crazy. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, O oh God, in our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Mary Thomas, as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm sorry, may I get it right yet? Anniversaries? Where are you traveling? Okay. Let us pray. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, and protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a safe journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, last week I uh, told you <coughs> that we're going to be painting the sanctuary and as you can see, it's painted. Um, it's not completed, a little touching up to do, but this is what it is. Uh, we also had this because there was a flood from the um, old water here in Harrison Hall and um, we had to change the flooring in that area as well. So that's the work that's been done so far and I hope that it is to your life. Thank you. 
also been in Norway for that purpose. Yeah. Um, Lorian is here as a teacher. Um, so you can see more of that. that.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ.